Hello, let us now have a look at question 2 of UNEB UCE 2022. The atomic numbers of elements Q, T, X, Y, and Z are 2, 7, 11, 13, and 16 respectively. That means they have given us the number of protons. Atomic number is number of protons of these elements. So if you have number of protons, usually you also have number of electrons because if they are atoms that means it will be equal to the number of electrons so we shall have to write the corresponding electronic configurations so that we can attempt the questions that are to follow so respectively i'll arrange them in their right order so we have q atomic numbers two so electronic configuration is two so we are using the ordinary way of writing electronic configurations so we have t t has atomic number seven first energy level two second will take the rest which will be five then we have x has 11 first energy level will take two the next will take a maximum of eight and the last one will take the remainder then we have y which is 13 so the same way like x two eight and then three and lastly we have z which is 16 so we shall have 2 8 6 so you want to find the formula that could be formed if y reacts with z now our y is a metal as you can see it has less than four electrons in the outermost energy level so it has three so this being a metal in group three it will have a valence of three so if you want to find the formula of y we shall write y its valence as a superscript or a power and then we have z z is a nonmetal which is in group six so it has a valence of two because it will need two electrons to become stable so we have our z here which is a two so i prefer starting with the metal and then a nonmetal not the other way around so if i'm to arrange this then i'll come up with the formula y2 z3 so that means when y reacts with z we shall have two atoms of y combining with three atoms of z then we have x reacts with t x is a metal in group one so it has valence one so we shall have our x valence one and then t is a non-metal in group five so it has valence three because it will need three extra electrons to become stable so our t has valence three so we shall go through the same procedure of coming up with the formula of the compound so we shall have x3 t1 if we had removed this one because not having a number here basically means it's a one we shall come up with x3 t so that becomes the formula when x reacts with t meaning three atoms of x will combine with one atom of y Let's now have a look at part B. State the elements that exist as diatomic gases. So we have half a mark, probably it will be one. So here we have our Q, or oh, we have to write this. So here we have two, two, five, two, eight, one, two, eight, three, and two, eight, six. So state the elements that exist as diatomic gases so the atomic gases are usually non-metals they should be at least non-metals because metals in most cases they are solid except mercury which is a liquid so we are going to look at non-metals so this is a non-metal this q is a non-metal with atomic number two and it's in group eight it is stable so this one is basically monoatomic this is monoatomic in nature it's not diatomic so q's out we have t25 so t could be a good option if at all it can bond through a triple covalent bond you can feel free to pause and see how this triple covalent bond will accept t to become diatomic so here the best option is t for now 281 which is x this is a metal we shall ignore y is a metal we shall ignore and then 286 now 286 appears like it could be having the ability of 
okay it is z sorry not s it could be having the ability of forming a diatomic kind of nature but usually this z because of the higher atomic number and mass number most likely it will not be a gas so shall take one that has a lower mass number or atomic number because it will likely to be light and and stay as a gas so the best option here becomes t for this one it can only occur at higher temperatures as a gas so here the best option is t diatomic so our t will actually be in this format as a molecule which one is inert the one that has a completely filled outermost energy level if you have to remember we had q q had two in the first energy level we know the first energy level can take a maximum of two and this one is in group eight if we are to correspond it with the periodic table we shall have it as helium so the inert element will be q which one is or are metals now if you have to look at the marks here we have one mark here we are having halves so that means most likely here we shall have to bring in the aspect of S. The aspect of S is or are metals. So our metals, we saw them. This one which has 11 corresponds to probably X and then Y, if I'm not wrong. So is or are metals shall have X and Y. Which one of the elements belongs to group 1 in the periodic table? Now, for it to belong to group 1, you must have one electron in the outermost energy level. So that means we shall come to this one, which has this one electron in the outermost energy level. And this one corresponds to X. So that means X belongs to group 1 in the periodic table. That's all we had for this question, I believe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.